morning, everybody. Um, thank you, Dan, for the introduction. And uh, I'd like to say it's a great honour and a privilege to be here uh, today. Uh, it's given me a great opportunity to meet colleagues here in Cary and other uh, people from Buenos Aires, um, but also to visit your beautiful city and beautiful country, which I hope to take some time visiting. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to speak about the digital economy in Ireland. And I'm going to take four, going to make four particular contributions. Very briefly, I'm going to look at the context of the development, look at how the digital economy developed. I'm going to take some examples from Dublin, and then I'm going to look um, at some of the learning points that we have garnered over the years, um, and look at those and to, we'll consider that. So the first part of this to look at the context. Um, and yesterday, um, Bobby and Dan gave a very good uh, description um, and background to our economic development. That our movement, you know, to a more open economy, international links, uh, development, looking to the European community. But as ever, uh, journalists always hit it on the spot with one little word, Ireland, new spirit in the old sod. And that's what happened in the 60s. And the picture we have here is of Sean Lamas, one of the leaders who helped open the economy with people like um, Kevin Whitaker, who's a civil servant, who developed a plan and vision for, for the country. But also, we introduced free education. And going back to the 60s, that was the beginning of our knowledge economy. We had to broaden and upskill our, our uh, population. But we also had business people who were beginning to emerge. People like Tony Ryan, uh, Tony O'Reilly, Michael Smurfett, whose company uh, has sponsored part of this program. So that's the context that we're talking about. And if you look here, and I have apologies that this is a dizzy slide, but in, here on the left-hand side, we're saying it's an ongoing revolution, the development of the digital economy. It was a gentle revolution from that time, opening up and developing the industrial base, preparing for foreign direct investment, moving towards a knowledge society, and talking about, Fernando, what you've been talking about, developing intelligent and smart responses from a government to the citizens and to the community. But if you look here, we, we developed uh, our education system. Very important, that investment in education. Investment into education pays so many times over. So if you look at the Irish uh, population, the young population, and over 50% between the ages of 25 and 34 have higher education. If you look at the age group 15 or 18 to 25, over 80% have some form of third level education, maybe not university education. So we put a lot of emphasis on access to education. We've also, um, over the last 50 years or more, encouraged um, foreign investment. We, and, and that, I'll talk a little bit about that, I know Dan talked about it yesterday, but nine out of 10 of our US companies and ICD are based in Ireland, primarily in Dublin. Nine out of ten global software operations are in, based in Ireland. Four out of five top IT services companies in Ireland, and 13 out of 15 medical tech companies. So in, in encouraging those in uni, with, with the universities in our educational system, R&D centres of excellence have developed, and that's critical. If you involve uh, FDIs and multinationals coming to your country, you want them to add value, you want them to contribute, and we have managed to do that through R&D sectors uh, in our universities, microchip development, data analytics, the Internet of Things, and so on. And also then, we have developed an advanced legislative framework um, and protection. And that's really important, particularly around data and IP. We've cloud computing hub, 
we have a business friendly environment but with a great emphasis on the citizen as well as business and of course we've got a young population so if you look at that it's the ingredients that create the environment for things to happen it takes time um, but one of the great things of a digital economy you can skip part of it very quickly it doesn't have to happen over uh, a very long period the elephant in the room often when we're talking about um, you know foreign direct investment is are they only there for the tax return but i think as dan was saying you know foreign direct investments now don't come to countries they come to cities cities you compete internationally for uh, not even within your own country but within the global framework and i think one of the things that the fdi has come and there has been a lot of discussion about tax you know both, both in america and the un and the, uh, the, US, the eu but the key thing is that transparency about that tax which we feel we have within the country but also that those foreign direct companies and that investment actually enables the development of R&D. And what we now see that it's important to put high tech companies near startup companies and that there's a synergy then and therefore more indigenous companies can spin off from the basis of, high, of, uh, of multinational companies. There's 150,000 people employed in this sector, up 40% since 2010. Indigenous sector, there's about 12,000. But increasingly, there's that link uh, between the two in terms of knowledge transfer and um, technology. Of course, we want this happening in the whole of Ireland. And you can see we've different you know, enterprise development, uh, stage development, uh, encouraging uh, entrepreneurship and business and multinationals. But inevitably, they would come to the city. And that's seen, of course, as a concern because the hub is around Dublin. And in Dublin, we've got a very big ecosystem, a state, central authority, local government inf infrastructure with universities, that help create this ecosystem for startups and for technology. I'd like just to talk about just two initiatives. There's lots and lots of programs, and in some ways that can be a problem. If you have too many programs and they're not integrated, what do you do? And I'll come to that in a minute. But this is one of the programs because it shows, and I think you refer to it, Fernando, that um, developing um, a digital economy and digital startups and high tech startups is not just about business, it's developing the local economy, it's developing in this example I'm giving is of the digital hub in Dublin because that's as much about regeneration of the local community, it's increasing access to education for local schools in a disadvantaged area, helping uh, bridge the digital divide and it's helping community development as well as business development. So I think that's an important working space. It's part of what we provide, but it's much, much more than that. There are other, other initiatives, and we've lots of initiatives, because this is one I think is very good, because it's about, it's an accelerator, it's an incubator that helps um, companies form teams, work together in a very, very kind of like boot camp way to produce uh, their plans and business plans and to get investment. And that's really important. This is an initiative in Dublin, which I think is very important. It's only about two years old. And I, I'll tell you how we got there. But in Dublin now, we've got a commissioner for startups. And in you know 2015 alone, we had 1,200 startups, 250 global tech companies, and we raised over 300 million. But really, what this initiative is about is bringing people together. It's looking from the government, having leadership there to encourage this development, have leadership in the city council, but also then involving business with Dublin Chamber of Commerce. 
So it, it's actually about bringing things together. And it's very interesting how this initiative happened, and it happened relatively quickly. Basically, we were concerned with the multiplicity of initiatives, with the multiplicity of agencies working, working in this area. And what Dublin, the, the government, central government, Dublin City Council, Dublin Chamber of Commerce, came together to look at Dublin and wanted Dublin to be the place to start a high-tech business. And it just, they saw, requires a single strategy, something for people to work together and make possible. And what were the three really key issues in that? It was coordination, you know, bringing, getting one voice for the city, ensuring that there was a coherent marketing and outreach promotion of the city. Facilitation, where were the gaps? What would help startups? Listening to startups, listening to citizens, what was required in the city to make this happen and to make it more effective? And of course, what regulation was necessary to ensure that there was a pro startup environment? But it also looked at issues like visas for uh, entrepreneurs who wanted to come over to Dublin to start up or for investors. So it looked at all the regulation to see what would help uh, Dublin become really a global city with high technology and become, I think what Fernando was calling an intelligent city, a smart city. How could it really become a smart city? Because a smart city and a digital economy is not all about business. It's about the citizen, it's about jobs, it's about access but it's using digital technology to facilitate employment and enhance the role of the citizen. So if you look at the ecosystem, you know, in, in, in the abstract, you need to have a culture, you need to have an environment that encourages uh, activity. But if you look again at the example of the digital hub, it's in a small area of Dublin, it's an old area, it has its own culture, its own traditions, it, it has a lively environment, and that's what created the ambience of excitement for startups, so they become part of the community. Uh, it's about human capital and education, so education is critical to the development, and that ensures communities at primary, second and third level benefit from that kind of an approach. Of course, it's about business environment and supports. You have to have supports for business that facilitate rather than instruct. And that means talking to business and getting them involved. Fernando talked a lot about innovation. Innovation is critical, but we all know that the digital economy is not about basically technology. It's about organization and cultural change. It's getting people to embrace innovation in a way that's really profitable for the whole country. It's access to finance. Money is always important, as we know, but finance will come when there are good ideas. Entrepreneurial networks and mentoring, and that's what Startup Dublin is. It brought mentoring, networking, so that startups could learn from one another and learn from multinationals as well. And of course, it's access to markets. Markets not only in our own country, but in Europe and overseas. And I think Dan made a very interesting point yesterday that effectively all startups now will become bigger uh, uh, FTIs, if you like, in their own country because they will need to think locally as well as, as, as locally. But of course, it's not a command and control structure. You can't come in and say, okay, guys, let's do this as Bart would in, in the Simpsons. You, you do have to. Um, you know, see, um, you have to create an environment and a, a culture where this can happen. Um, my next slide, I hope, is here. No, it's not. I just, I, and these are the, they're, what I have is, um, and I just, if I can just get it here. Um, Things to consider when um, 
I'll just go back to old Bart um, before I issue my invitation. Um, I thought it was really interesting what Bernard or Fernando said. It, and the first point I make is that it's all about city governance. It is about city governments because city governments, cities are going to become um, intellectual, intelligent cities. So it's about digital economy, digital cities, digital systems, and digital jobs and digital environment. And for that to happen, you must have a vision, leadership, and focus, and cooperation at all levels. It will not happen on its own. And that way, the city now is becoming, the city state, it's becoming really critical in the development of society. And the critical thing in this governance, of course, is that the citizen is part of it. And, you know, when you were talking about the development of apps, that's to help people in their day-to-day -day life for measurement, for, for lots of things that makes life easier for people living in a city. And that's what, you know, city governance is all about, involvement of the citizen and all those. The other thing I think that's really important, and, you know, listening over the last few days, I know this is the way uh, people think here, that shaping an ecosystem is really important to do it around local conditions. You can never take a plan from another country, another city, um, and what you do is help clusters grow, adapt but not mend. And the other thing is, if you're encouraging FDIs, it's that link with the indigenous uh, startups that makes the difference. That's really critical. So you can have a, a hub with startups and multinationals. So multinationals help in that process of the development of the city. The private sector is critical. We have to have business and entrepreneurs. They are going to be the driving force. We have found and found over the years in Ireland the state cannot create business. Entrepreneurs create business. The fourth point then is, and we've I've mentioned this a number of times, you need to foster talent. How do you create talent? And you foster talent with, through your universities, through links with industry, and knowledge development and transfer. That is the greatest challenge I see in economies today and cities. How do you foster that talent? How do you ensure that all citizens reach that potential? Because effectively, that's what everybody is looking for. And fifthly then, in our own culture, you have to tackle cultural change. And as I said, technology in itself is easy. It's people that you need to bring with you, and that's where the change must happen. In our case, we had a number of barriers, administrative barriers in the city, and we had to work through these in order to make the change. But every city knows what needs to change, and it's doing that that makes a difference. The, sixthly, the removal of administrative and legal barriers to start a foundation are important. And that's important. We're really interested, and if anybody here would be interested, in coming over to Dublin to start up. And that's something we could maybe talk about, that people come to Dublin to start up companies from Buenos Aires and vice versa, mm -hmm. because that exchange is really important. So what you want is to remove barriers for that development of talent. As I said earlier, capital is always available for good ideas. I don't know if we have any bankers other than Connor here in the audience. But, you know, good ideas attract money. And, and they're very quick to see that. So once you have that there, money will follow. And, you know, finally, um, and I don't think we're always good at this. We've got better at it. Celebrate success. Celebrate wins that have happened within the startup sector. So, you know, that's most of what I have to say. But finally, you know, I'd like to invite you, Fernando, and your, your colleagues, you know, to visit us in, in Dublin, you know, to see what's happening, to see the range of activities, to see and to learn from you what, what you've been doing. And there's a particular event as you know, the Irish like to party, but we always do it with purpose. 
and we're all invited to Cork in November, where there's a global startup gathering. And that may be the beginning of a long relationship. Thank you very much.